right, welcome back. Now, we call this segment Track Nigeria, where we basically track issues about anti-corruption and accountability. This is with the support of the Makata Foundation and, of course, uh, the Center for Information Technology and Development, CTAD. On this episode, our focus is on education, public schools to be precise. Now, in 2018, the Oyo State Government celebrated a rare feat in education. The government announced that students in the state who sat for the 2018 West Africa Examination Council exam got the best result in 18 years. For the first time in 18 years, students in your state secondary schools made an average of 54.1% in OIAC exam. To break it down further, 29,174 students scored five credits out of 53,850 students that sat for the examination. This may really not look like um, a great achievement, but if you take into account the academic performance of secondary school students in the state in the last 10 years, dating back uh, from 2005, you'll understand why the state is celebrating the 2018 WIAC uh, results. This is what uh, it was from 2005 to 2010, for instance, and um, there you can see it. Certainly nothing to write home about. In 2005, only 7.89% of the students actually, um, well, got uh, five credits now, as in five credits, including English and mathematics. 2006, 10.4. 2007, of course, you can see it came back to 6.16%, very poor. 2008, 9.14%. And look at the figure in 2010, 13. 40%, very poor, especially for a state in the southwest of the country. Remember, the southwest of the country is considered to uh, be educationally developed, so to speak, and that uh, quite a lot of people go to school in the southwest of the country. But look at that in 2010. And then 2018, 50, over 50%, 50 percent, 54 point something percent. So you can understand why um, the your state government had to celebrate it. And let me just say, um, was hit by the poor performance uh, as students in public schools in the state where infrastructure are decrepit and in most cases completely broken down. We went to the ancient town of Ibora in Ibarapa central local government area of your state recently to cast a spotlight now on public primary and secondary schools in the town. And uh, here is what the situation is with public schools in that town. If there's one place that clearly demonstrates the near collapse of infrastructure in public schools in your state, it is Iwara town. Almost all the public schools in the town lack basic infrastructure that will make teaching and learning convenient and encouraging. Since there is no conducive environment for learning in the school, it is actually affecting them. So the children will not have a proper education before they go and sit for the exam. And then what do they expect, expect them to perform? The performance will be very low. That's just it. Since it was founded in 1950, not much has been added to the infrastructure at Ansarodin Primary School 1 in the town. Most of the buildings are gone no longer suitable for learning. Surprisingly, as badly run down as the buildings look, classes still take place in some. With no toilet facilities in the school, some of the run down and abandoned classrooms have been turned into defecation areas. This is Methodist Primary School Okiagogo Ibora. Established over 100 years ago by the missionaries, the school has endured both the good times and the bad times over the decades. The state of the buildings in the school is a clear sign that the legacies left by the missionaries were never maintained. Even the few classrooms where students still take their lessons are clearly not maintained and it's only a matter of time before they too begin to give way. Uh, in fact, the majority of the primary school has a dilapidated uh, building. Some are not even having enough. Even the one that is having very good one, they are not having enough. This one is happening in the primary school and as well as the secondary school. 
So we have that one in the, in the schools. Then apart from that, uh, in the secondary schools, we had to have a very good building. We discovered that in fact the laboratory equipment is not even enough. Some are not even having anyone. In fact, and whoever that have at all, it is not enough for someone to be. This is particularly when you talk about. I mean, when you 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 you, you marry it with the number of students that they have. What you are seeing in essence is that there's no enough science equipment. Top place of technology. I mean, the, the I see um, uh, the computer, whatever, whatever. So we have a major problem in the education sector, particularly in Barapa Central. But as you can see yourself, you see that a lot of things are degenerated. You find a lot of uh, schools that don't even have roof. You find a lot of schools that don't have seats. Uh, chance to sit down. You find some schools that they don't have uh, anything like educational materials at all. It's uh, appalling. The blame, I don't think, is to anybody around there. There's nothing, there's nothing good to write, to write home about. Nothing special to write home about. This computer laboratory is a constituency project of a federal lawmaker who once represented the town as part of his constituency. From outside, it looks like a finished project. But this is what it is from inside, a virtually empty building. Not a single computer has been supplied to the school or the laboratory since it was built in 2009. In fact, most of the students here have never touched a computer before. Especially when you are talking of learning, you know, area, the conducive area that one is learning to, is also hid one's learning. Definitely it must affect it. Because some, I mean a student that is learning in a, in a bad atmosphere, I mean in a very dilapidated uh, this, uh, room, definitely they are willing. For this time, we are now in the, we are now in the, the, the rainy season. We are going to the dry season. Definitely, it, the time will soon come, there will be heat. It, it's going to affect them. There's no way. There's no way. And when we talk of the science equipment too, it is the, it is, uh, it is the materials that is available, that the teacher or whoever that is, I mean, the teacher will use to teach the student. Whatever that is not available in the, this in the school, it's not possible for someone to, I mean, to, to teach, I mean, to use it for the student. They only rely on the available materials that in the school, as, as available equipment that is in the school. Definitely is going to affect the student. This is a story of several public schools across Nigeria, a story of wanton neglect. And this is despite the various state governments budgeting for education in their states every year. So where has the money gone to? If you want to get the exact fact, it's not even the fault of the state. This thing is joint allocation. Before money is allocated to the local government, issues that involve primary school, especially teacher salary, will be deducted from source. It's after that deduction that, you, that you, according to indices, that you now see that the, uh, the uh, remaining fund is being shared. So, if, if they even allow different local government to take care of such problems, some local government might end up with zero allocation. It depends on the number of schools that you have. And you already have kids in this school, there's no way you can close one school for another. We still even need more schools right now. The existing ones have not been taken care of and we need more schools. The state depends on the, on the federal. And when the federal send any, 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 no matter how little allocation to the, to the, to the local government, it is through the state government. The state will have swallowed almost 80% of the allocation sent to the, to the local. They cannot even pay salary. Talk less of uh, pumping money to educational level.
It's wickedness. Public schools in Nigeria are mostly tools of political campaign and conduit pipe to siphon money by politicians, most of whom have their kids in schools abroad. Most public primary and secondary schools are not provided with enough fund for infrastructure development and day-to-day -day running. There are cases where teachers and parents contribute to keep some schools running. I would be very, very grateful if there could be intervention. Because even right now, for the little time that I've spent in this, we have made, I mean, we have made a, I mean, a request, even to the state government, that this, so this, this, this number of students, I mean, number of schools, needs uh, attention. For instance, let me give you an example now. For instance, now there are some schools. In fact, two or three schools now have approached me individually that the parent, the PTM. PTA, the, the Parent and Teachers Association, they've started making um, and some assistance. They now even wish me or ask me to give my own personal contribution, apart from the government one, to give my own personal contribution. At least two, at least two schools now have done that one. And uh, if I could be, if we could see an intervention from uh, either uh, an individual organization, in fact, we'd be very, very happy. And we want that intervention in terms of probably in terms of building and the, the science equipment too. We like it. I mean, we like it in that way too. Okay. Beyond dilapidated schools and poor infrastructure, abandoned government projects are also a common feature in many communities like Ibora. This is a Millennium Development Goal project by a former senator. It's a maternity center designed to cater for rural women who may not be able to access tertiary health facilities in time during childbirth. The maternity center was never completed and the structure is now abandoned in the middle of the bush. Well, joining me to discuss uh, that report and the situation of public schools further is Dr. Funsha Olatunde, who is a lecturer in uh, the Department of Arts and Social Sciences Education uh, at the University of Lagos. Thank you very much, Doc, for coming on the program. Uh, thank uh, you, uh, first off, g give me your impression of, um, you know, the pictures you just saw, that report. My impression basically will be that I will tell you straight off that um, this is not coming as a shock. It's something I'm used to, being somebody who practices, I mean, in this sector. So, but um, I won't say that. There is also that feeling of, this is my sector and things are going wrong. So it's, it's a reminder of the problems we have in the education. And who would you blame for this? Ah, Crumbled <coughs> classrooms. <laughs> and you know, you look at some of those classrooms, they are more or less dead traps, especially for uh, the children there. Yes. Uh, for you, like I said, it didn't come as a sh shock to me uh, because it's something I'm used to. I see this all around, even in Lagos as we speak. Uh, but when you talk about who to blame, um, the blame now uh, belongs to all of us. Parents, uh, stakeholders, and the, I mean, like myself, government on the other hand, different people. We all have our own portion of the blames. Because if we begin to look at it, number one, schools are there. And by the time these schools were constructed, they were constructed for maybe a community to cater to uh, some numbers of pupils. And over the years, if the uh, population of pupils had increased and thereby having uh, some effect on the structure, structure, what have we done as a government to take care of that? That is on the one hand. On the other hand, parents get this impression that government should fund education completely. completely. And that, that gives the uh, room for parents to have kids beyond the numbers stipulated in the National Policy on Education uh, on Population. That's on the one hand. Then for those of us who are stakeholders, when we get the opportunity to speak out, do we really speak out for our sectors? Do we? So that's why I said blames. We all have our blames there. We I have mean, our portions. Year in, year out. Let's take the case of your state, for instance. I mean, year in, year out, budgets are provided for, for, for schools. You even have the universal base, uh, you back yeah, fund, of course. Fund, and yeah. the you back fund, for instance, you would expect should go to um, schools at this basic level. But, yes. you know, budgets year in, year out, millions of naira, billions of naira pumped in over the years. But we're, we're not seeing it on the ground. 
So it, what's what's going on? The, the issue, like, and it's like, like no one is asking questions. The issue is when you have budgets for certain things and there is no follow up on what exactly is budgeted for, has it been taken care of? And if not, what is the reason? If we don't have that put in place, if there's no structure to check that, we'll continue to have this. Regime. But how can local people like this, for instance, take, for instance, Ibora, local people like that, how, how would they be able to, you know, run, you know, sort of ask monitor, questions. ask questions? Okay. You now, know. you're only able to ask questions about issues or things that you are aware of, that you have details of. So the question is, do we have structures in place to inform people about how much has been allocated to education in their community? So that they know and, and, they're, they're, able they're, know and they're able to say, oh, for 2018, for example, X amount of money has been budgeted for um, construction of classrooms. This has not been done. You know, we must have structures like that. And until we put this in place, we will continue to have a recurrent. Of this and, and because you said that, let, let's look at, for instance, the the the, um, the laboratory computer laboratory project we yes, saw in that yes. report. You look at the laboratory. Um, you, you look at the plaque. You know, on, mm -hmm. on that lab, it, it gives the impression that look, the project has been completed. I mean, you do a further investigation, it, it, it will show that that project because it was back in 2009, constituency yeah. project completed, but then we can't, we can't see computers there, yeah. and people are not asking questions. It's still the same issue we find in Nigeria. So long as you and I would want to, for whatever reason, uh, political affiliations, religious affiliation, cultural or ethnic affiliations. We want to close our eyes to somebody doing something bad. We will continue to have this. Many projects. It's, it's a common scenario. No, here that, that's it. I mean, you know, it's... you'll find people will tell you money has been budgeted for this and the money has been expended, but that thing that money was budgeted for is not there. Uh, you may have the shell of it. That you can see from a distance. Because I'm very sure, I mean, the, the project, for instance, this uh, project, it clearly says computer That's laboratory. Yes, computer yes, laboratory yes. would not just mean a building. I mean, you should have and, and computers. And it there. also means that when whoever it's, uh, it is, the um, honorable member who was supposed to have been doing that, would have made a return to whoever is checking for all these purposes to say uh, so so number of computers, uh, computer units were purchased and you know, fix or um, place there, and they are in use. And because nobody is actually checking to find out if that report submitted for the purpose is true to what is on ground. Be because I, I don't want to believe that, um, you know, uh, the constituency project was only awarded for the construction of the building, no. and then it's named the computer lab. No, no. definitely it wouldn't have been. I, that, you know, uh, many times we shy away from the truth. We know that we have a culture of... Um, or impunity, you know, and so I can do whatever I like, and nobody, I know that nobody will question me, and even when questions are asked, and uh, whatever answer I give can actually, uh, sub, sub, you know, stay as the answer, and nobody is saying, look, but we find out that what you're saying is different from what we have on ground. So, because we have that, we will continue to have this situation until we are sure that if I say I have constructed 10 kilometers of road, and this is the, the quality of the road, it can be checked by people who are not part of it, independent uh, parties, and they can confirm that that number of or the computer uh, laboratory is there intact, the computers are functioning, and that it's being used. That's when you can say, oh, this has been done. And, and the same thing goes with... Um the the, the um, health center we saw there not completed and you know project awarded a, a number of years ago it's 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 just practically impossible to believe that um, the constituency project would only be awarded money would only be released for uh, just the shell of that building and not uh, the equip the, the equipping of the building itself you know DG, the issue with us as a people as Nigerians is we we have uh, um, imbibed this culture of um, corruption. I mean, that's what we call it now. And at the end of the day, whether you deliver on whatever you're promised or not, doesn't matter. 
And that's why we continue to have a recurring. Nobody, nobody will ask you because you know that nobody will ask you what exactly have you done. And because everything we do, we tend to put politics into it. If I'm going to ask you a question about whether you have delivered on your constituency project or not, the depth of the question would depend on whether we belong to the same party or not, whether we share the same political ideology or not. So, and it also means that the, the, the depth of my search for the truth, truth. would be um, yes, would be compromised based on whatever, or will be determined by whatever, I mean, whichever uh, side of the divide you are on. So it sees a problem we have, that education is that you find the issue of the uh, at, uh, uh, the center there that is also there, and these are just part of the issues we have. Well, how, how do you think local people like this, I mean local folks, because the fact is that um, these politicians know that the local folks are not empowered, you know, to monitor and complain or say anything. Okay. How, how do you think they can be empowered you, to begin to speak up I said something and earlier. demand accountability? I said this earlier that on the stakeholders, you know, like us, begin to speak up when we can. And how can and we probably speak? the media as well. Uh, how how can we speak up? If I am, I am a lecturer and I'm from that community, is it not possible for me to design a, a structure or a blueprint that we can use to request details of activities of our representatives? And there are quite a number of educated people. Uh, yes. We, right. Can we design something that we can use to pull information from them based on what they have proposed to do or even budgeted for and the monies have been released for so that we can check from time to time this is what is happening. Yes, the local people may not have the capacity, but you and I have the capacity to uh, develop them beyond what, I mean, at that local level, they can find means of communicating with those who can reach out to uh, the representatives wherever they are and reach out to those who should be checking on the representatives. That's when you have a proper structure in place. Now, remember that when, and whenever we talk about corruption here in Nigeria, you're talking about something that is endemic. It's not uh, limited to the local level yeah. or the state or, the, you know. So it means that somehow, as a people, we must get a reorientation away from corruption such that it's a give that once you have said, this is what I have done, everybody can believe you that it is what you have done because we already, we have seen it. Senate. We have seen it because there's a check in place, a, a, a roadmap that shows us what you have done step by step until the final project is delivered. As, as a teacher yourself, you, you look at uh, you know, this, this school, you look at the, the, the schools now, you look at the buildings and all of that. I mean, how much impact would it, would this, uh, you know, structures like this, how much impact would that have in the performance of the students, you know, that come out of that uh, kind of um, significant, system. significant impact. Because one of those things we know for sure is that your learning is a function of the teacher on the one hand, the resources you have on the one hand, and the environment, the complete environment, learning environment. Now, if you say the teachers are there, the teachers have to have the tools to work with, which is not the case here. You know. Ab absolutely not the case. Okay, that is on the one hand. So you expect that there is a depletion of performance, performance that you are expecting based on that variable, that singular variable alone, that teaching aspect. Then we also said that the environment, the complete environment, that is uh, the classroom, classroom, the arrangement of seats, the aesthetics of the environment, because, yes, you may say it's a local environment, but who says that if you give them yeah, a local environment? If, 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 you give, if you give them a, 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 an atmosphere like this studio now, mm. who says they won't like it? And it will actually motivate them to want to come to school and pay attention. So the environment is a significant factor in whatever learning outcome you're expecting. So if, based on what we have seen, you don't expect too much from this. Uh, learners. You don't expect too much because, number one, uh, you get to school in the morning, imagine, and uh, your school environment 
it's um, de depressing. It's 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 not motivating you to want to even stay in school. I mean, it it wouldn't surprise me if most of the kids there uh, get to come to school every day because their parents literally force them to come to school. It's not an environment that is attracting them. You have you have schools around us that. If, even if, if you are just passing with a child, the child will look at the school and say, I want to go to this school. Absolutely. I mean, that is attracting enough, and that's where learning starts. The motivation to learn is from the attraction to the learning environment. That's, that's a given. So if you don't have that, definitely the output in terms of performance is not... So not, not surprising at all that, uh, you know, for a very long time, two, 2005 up to 2018, um, the performance of students it's very poor in Ohio it's, State. It's not surprising. It's not surprising. What is surprising and what I would like to find out is what has changed between that time, that time. and now. Because the infrastructure, well, you know, infrastructure it's, getting it's, worse. it's getting worse. You know, the, the depredation is, I mean, it's, uh, it's a continuous thing. It's not like there's been an improvement in no. the structure. So I would like to find out what has actually happened in between that period and the result we're getting. Because for all you care, it could be two, three, or four um, teachers in some of these schools, schools that are accounting for this change. You're right. result that because you're it, this is just percentage. Uh -huh, anyway. it is. So it could be the, the, the personality of some teachers there that is... And, and let's, let's quickly say this, that, you know, the number of private schools you would have in that uh -huh. area, you uh, know, in your state as, as a whole, and then that percentage covers both private, private schools uh, as well. Yeah, but but it's, it's, it's really bad. If public schools are like this, obviously parents would not want to send their children there. Definitely they would not want to. Unless they have no choice. It brings us to another point. You know I said earlier that um, many times when we talk about education, what I tell people is, we have a problem of not knowing how many we are. To we, even we don't have figures to work with. To so, work with, to plan with. so you don't it's difficult to do any planning. Now, given that on the one hand, there's also the issue of readiness of whoever is in charge, government, uh, stakeholders, parents, the readiness to put structures in place to take care of these numbers that we're having. So if, like I said, the classroom designed for maybe 25 uh, pupils, mm -hmm. now you're having like um, 50 in there, definitely. That'll be... You, tell, you, you, you definitely will uh, tell on the infrastructure. It, it will tell on the infrastructure. But when you now say that, even if the, the, the number of pupils had remained constant, the fact that you are using this uh, uh, structure over and over again, again, of course, you know... Without the, maintenance. It's, it's, the, you are not maintaining, so it's going to be diminishing further. So it's something that, number one, we need to have figures and we need to be willing to work with these figures to say, for example, while uh, the chairman of the local government was talking, uh, I, he was talking about people coming to help and all that. And the question that was ringing in my mind is, look, what are those things that you can point to? Of course, he did say that the Parents Teachers Forum or uh, Parents Teachers Association, yeah. if that's what they're called there, that they are making effort and but they are also requesting support. support. But the question is, they should have been able to tell us that, for example, look at this new classroom now, that was this refurbished classroom. This was done by parents. parents. Because if we continue to say education should be free for all, then we can encourage parents to have more children. Of course, we won't, they would discover at some point that education isn't free. It isn't free. And so, but it's, you and I will be the best beneficiaries of those uh, misinformation that we have given them. Because these kids are not going to be exported to anywhere. No, no, they no. will live in the community, community with our kids. So what are we talking about? We need to be truthful to ourselves, and then we need to be accountable. We, if, if it is on a yearly basis, like for the uh, local government, he was saying, the chairman was saying that some local governments will end up with zero allocation, allocation. after the deduction mm -hmm. of salaries. And I said, no, it's not possible. Because if you look at how uh, budgets are being prepared, you see that there are lines to cater to this or yeah, that. So, to so that, exactly. it's to be proactive and progressive in your thought. Plan. What are the priority things you need to do? You need for maybe this uh, uh, local government, you have uh, maybe 30 schools. For this year, 
whatever is coming as extra will focus on refurbishing four classrooms for this uh, locality okay. and maybe another for somewhere else so that and it's because we are not doing that doing that's why that. it's easy for somebody to just keep the money and you know once a new budget comes that money becomes part of that person's personal issues you know but if there's a line that says for this year's budget we're going to refurbish and, and stick to it and usually and there's we, a line but you know and we do it that, diligently that provision we won't have this issue of uh, continuous uh, dilapidation that is not being checked Doctor, thank you very much for coming on the program. The pleasure is mine. Always. It's, it's, it's really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Let's just hope there's a change. And, I, and I, I, we'll, I pray continue, we'll continue to push this. So, because I, I think as a media, too, we have a responsibility to continue to speak they, for those they, people they, who you, cannot speak. You, uh, the media actually have needs no voice. to. It, the, the media needs to. And do more of this. Because like I said, it's not a shock to me. Because even in Lagos, there are schools that are worse than what yes. you have seen. Even in Lagos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming on the program. The pleasure is my. Well, that's it on the program. If you want to watch it again, it's simple. Just go to our website, tv360nigeria.com. You will find this program and lots more there. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash tv360nigeria. On Twitter, it's at uh, tv360nigeria. That's our handle. And of course, on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash tv360online. We well, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye bye.